High school student Casey Becker is home alone when she receives a phone call from an unknown person, during which they discuss horror films. The caller turns sadistic, refusing to leave Casey alone and threatening her life. He reveals that her boyfriend Steve is bound and gagged outside on her patio and demands she answer questions about horror films if she wants him to live. After Casey answers a question about Friday the 13th incorrectly, Steve is murdered in front of her. Casey attempts to escape, but is cornered by someone wearing a ghost face costume, who kills her before her parents arrive home to find her disemboweled corpse hanging from a tree. News media descend on the town in the wake of the murders and a police investigation begins. Teenager Sydney Prescott struggles with the first anniversary of her mother Maureen's rape and murder, while a news reporter, Gail Weathers, whom Sydney despises, arrives among the media. Gail was responsible for spreading rumors and conspiracy theories about Maureen's death, insinuating that the imprisoned Cotton Weary, who was tried and convicted of Maureen's rape and murder, was not responsible for the crime. That night, while waiting at home for her best friend Tatum Riley to arrive, Sydney gets a taunting phone call and is attacked by Ghostface. Sydney's boyfriend Billy Loomis arrives immediately after. When he drops his cell phone, Sydney suspects him of making the call and flees. Billy is arrested and questioned, but later, at Tatum's house, Sydney receives another ominous call. The next day, Billy is released and suspicion shifts to Sydney's father Neil Prescott, due to the ominous phone calls having been traced to his phone. After school is suspended in wake of the murders, Ghostface ambushes the principal and stabs him to death. Tatum's boyfriend and Billy's best friend, Stu Mache, throws a party to celebrate the school's closure. Gail attends uninvited, as she expects the killer to strike again. Tatum's older brother, Deputy Sheriff Dewey Riley, also looks out for the murderer at the party. Tatum goes out to the garage and is cornered by Ghostface, who crushes her neck with the garage door when she attempts to escape through the pet door. Many party attendees are drawn away after hearing of the principal's death, leaving only Sydney, Billy, their friend Randy, Stu, and Gail's cameraman Kenny. After having sex, Sydney and Billy are confronted by Ghostface, who stabs Billy. Sydney escapes from the house and seeks help from Kenny, but he is killed by Ghostface. Gail crashes her van while escaping and Dewey is stabbed in the back while investigating in the house, with Sydney taking his gun for protection. Randy and Stu show up and accuse each other of being the killer, but Sydney retreats back into the house where she finds a wounded Billy. After they let Randy inside, Sydney gives Billy the gun, who in turn shoots Randy, revealing himself to be the killer, Stu is revealed to be his accomplice by talking into a voice changer. Billy and Stu corner Sydney in the kitchen and discuss their plan to kill her and pin the murder spree on her father, whom they have taken hostage. They also reveal that they murdered her mother and framed Cotton for it, as she was having an affair with Billy's father, which drove his mother away. Gail intervenes, enabling Sydney to escape and turn the tables on the killers, taunting them with a phone call and donning the ghost face costume, before knocking Billy out and killing Stu by dropping a television set on his head. An enraged Billy awakens and attacks Sydney, but Gail shoots him. Randy, wounded but alive, remarks that the killer always resurfaces for one last scare. As Billy rises, Sydney shoots Billy in the head, finally killing him. As police arrive, Dewey, badly injured, is taken away by ambulance as Gail makes an impromptu news report about the night's events. Two Windsor College seniors, Maureen and Phil, attend a sneak preview of STAB, a film based on the events of the Woodsboro Massacre that took place at the beginning of the first Scream movie. Briefly exiting the theater to use the bathroom, Phil is killed by the masked killer now known as Ghostface. Ghostface sits beside Maureen in Phil's place and stabs her, leading her to climb up on stage in a cry for help, which the audience mistakes for a publicity stunt until she falls dead. The news media, including local journalist Debbie Salt, descend on Windsor College where Sydney Prescott studies alongside her best friend Hallie. Her new boyfriend Derek, fellow Woodsboro survivor Randy and Derek's best friend Mickey. Two other Woodsboro survivors arrive police officer Dewey Riley to offer Sydney protection, and reporter Gail Weathers to cover the case. Gail and her new cameraman Joel, unsuccessfully try to stage a confrontation between Sydney and Cotton Weary, 
who is attempting to gain fame from his exoneration for the rape and murder of Sidney's mother, Maureen Prescott. That evening, Sidney and Hallie attend a party at a sorority house. At another nearby sorority house, Ghostface murders student C.C. Cooper. After the partygoers leave, Ghostface enters the house and attacks Sidney. Ghostface injures Derek but flees when the police arrive. Later, after realizing that CeCe's real name is Casey, Gail theorizes that the new ghost face is targeting students with the same names as the Woodsboro murder victims. Randy theorizes that the killer is likely someone Sidney knows and is basing the killings on a movie sequel. Soon after, ghost face calls Gail, Dewey, and Randy while they are together on the college campus. Despite their attempts to find him, ghost face ultimately ambushes Randy, pulling him into Joel's media van where he is murdered. Joel, scared he will be targeted next, skips town. As night falls on the campus, Dewey and Gail go to a building to review tapes of footage shot by Joel, hoping to spot the killer in the vicinity of the previous crime scenes, but the killer attacks them, stabbing Dewey. Two officers drive Sidney and Hallie to a safe house, but Ghostface intercepts the car and murders them. In the ensuing struggle, Ghostface is knocked unconscious, but recovers and kills Hallie. Drawn to music playing in the campus theater, seeking safety, Sidney finds Derek in the auditorium tied to a cross from an earlier fraternity hazing ritual. Ghostface arrives, revealing himself to be Mickey, and shoots Derek, killing him. Mickey intends to kill Sidney and allow himself to be arrested so he can blame violence in movies for the murders at his trial. Local reporter Debbie Salt is then revealed to be his accomplice, whom Sidney recognizes as Mrs. Loomis. Mrs. Loomis betrays Mickey and shoots him, reflexively shooting and injuring Gail before he collapses. Mrs. Loomis reveals that she is seeking revenge against Sidney for killing her son, Billy, but Sidney points out the hypocrisy of her motive, considering that Mrs. Loomis abandoned her own son in the past, which caused him to turn into a serial killer. The pair fight until Cotton intervenes. Mrs. Loomis attempts to manipulate Cotton into murdering Sidney, but to her shock, he chooses to shoot Mrs. Loomis in exchange for an interview with Sidney and Diane Sawyer. Mickey suddenly reappears, but is soon shot and killed by Gail and Sidney. Sidney then shoots Miss Loomis in her head, ensuring her death. When the police arrive, Dewey is revealed to still be alive and Gail climbs into the ambulance with him rather than taking the opportunity to report to the returned Joel, indicating that she cares more for Dewey than for the notoriety she always sought. Sidney instructs the press to direct questions to Cotton, rewarding him with the fame he has been chasing while removing the attention from herself. Cotton Weary, now the host of a successful talk show, is contacted by Ghostface on his car phone. The voice demands to know the whereabouts of Sidney Prescott. When Cotton refuses to cooperate, Ghostface breaks into his home and attacks his girlfriend Christine. Cotton rushes home only for Christine to think he was behind the attack. As he tries to reason with her, Ghostface kills Christine, then Cotton, telling him he should have revealed Sidney's location. Detective Mark Kincaid contacts Gail Weathers to discuss the recent murders, prompting her to travel to Hollywood, where she finds Dewey Riley working as an advisor on the set of Stab 3, the third film in the series based on the Ghostface murders. Ghostface kills Stab 3 actress Sarah Darling, causing production of Stab 3 to be halted. The remaining Stab 3 cast, along with Dewey and Gail, gather at the home of Jennifer Jolie. Ghostface murders her bodyguard and uses a gas leak to cause an explosion, which kills fellow actor Tom Prince. Sydney is living in seclusion as a crisis counselor for an abused women's hotline, fearing that another killer may strike. Having discovered Sydney's location, the killer begins taunting her by phone using a voice changer to sound like her deceased mother Maureen Prescott, forcing her out of hiding and drawing her to Hollywood. Martha Meeks the sister of Sydney's friend Randy who was murdered while Sydney was in college, visits Sydney and the others to deliver a videotape that Randy made before his death, posthumously warning them that the rules of a horror film do not apply to anyone in the third and final film of the horror trilogy and that any of them, including main character Sydney, could die. Sydney is later attacked by Ghostface at a movie set, forcing the police to keep Sydney safe at their station. Dewey, 
Gail, Jennifer, and the remaining Stab 3 cast, Angelina and Tyson, attend a birthday party for Stab 3's director, Roman Bridger. After Gail discovers Roman's body in the basement, Ghostface attacks the group, seemingly murdering Angelina when she wanders off alone, and successfully kills Tyson and Jennifer. The killer then orders Sydney to the mansion to save Gail and Dewey, who are being held hostage. When Sydney arrives, Ghostface lures her inside where Gail and Dewey are bound and gagged. As Sydney is freeing them, Ghostface appears, though Sydney gains the upper hand using a hidden gun to fight him off. Kincaid shows up but is knocked unconscious by Ghostface. Sydney flees and hides in a secret screening room where she is discovered by Ghostface, who reveals himself as Roman, having survived being shot by wearing a bulletproof vest. Roman admits to being Sydney's half-brother, born to their mother Maureen when she was an actress in Hollywood. Four years prior, he had tried reuniting with her, only for her to reject him due to him being the product of rape. Bitter over the rejection, Roman began stalking her, filming all the men she philandered with and showing Billy Loomis the footage of Billy's father with Maureen, which motivated Billy and Stu Mache to kill her, thus setting off the string of murders in Sydney's hometown and at her college. When he discovered how much fame Sydney had attracted due to those events, Roman snapped and lured Sydney out of hiding, planning to kill her and frame her for the murders. After Roman kills stab producer John Milton, who he implies is his biological father and one of their mother's rapists, Sydney furiously denounces him and his motives, provoking an enraged Roman to engage Sydney in a vicious fight, which ends when Roman shoots Sydney in the chest, but Sydney survives the shot and stabs Roman multiple times, revealing to him that she, too, was wearing a bulletproof vest. As Dewey and Gail arrive, a screaming Roman suddenly resurfaces with a knife, Sydney yells at Dewey to shoot Roman in the head, which Dewey does finally killing him. Sometime after at Sydney's house, Dewey proposes to Gail, who accepts. Sydney returns from a walk and leaves her gates, which were previously shown to be alarmed, open. She enters her home and is invited to join Dewey, Gail, and Kincaid to watch a movie. As she goes to join the others, her front door blows open behind her, but she walks away, leaving it as it is. 2011, on the 15th anniversary week of the original Woodsboro murders, two high school students are murdered by Ghostface. Sydney Prescott returns to Woodsboro the next day to promote her book with her publicist, Rebecca Walters. After evidence is found in her rental car, Sydney becomes a suspect in the murders and must stay in town until they are solved. Sydney's cousin, Jill Roberts, who is coping with the infidelity of her ex-boyfriend, Trevor, gets a threatening phone call from Ghostface, as does her friend Olivia. Jill and Olivia, alongside their friend Kirby Reed, are questioned about their calls by Dewey Riley, now the town's sheriff, while his deputies Judy Hicks, Anthony Perkins, and Haas assist him in the case. Gail Weathers, Dewey's wife, is struggling with writer's block and decides to investigate the murders against her husband's wishes. Sydney stays over with Jill and her mother, Sydney's aunt Kate. That night, Olivia is killed by Ghostface as Jill and Kirby watch in horror from across the street. Sydney herself is then confronted by Ghostface, and they fight until Ghostface is forced to flee when Perkins and Haas arrive. At the hospital, Sydney fires Rebecca after learning of her desire to exploit the murders to increase book sales, and Rebecca is subsequently murdered by Ghostface at a parking garage. Gail enlists the help of two high school movie fanatics, Charlie Walker and Robbie Mercer. Charlie theorizes that the killer is following the rules of horror remakes, and Gail and Sydney conclude that the killer will likely strike at the Stabathon, a screening party held in a barn where teenagers gather to binge watch all movies in the Stab franchise. Gail sneaks into the party to investigate, but Ghostface attacks her, stabbing her in the shoulder. Haas and Perkins, who were assigned to guard Gil's house, are also murdered. Sydney discovers through another taunting call from Ghostface that Jill has left for Kirby's house, before Ghostface attacks her and Kate, killing the latter. Jill, Kirby, Charlie, Robbie, and Trevor are at an after-party at Kirby's house when Ghostface strikes, killing a drunken Robbie. Sydney arrives to leave with Jill, but they are both chased by Ghostface. As Sydney calls Dewey and tries to find Jill, Kirby frees Charlie, who was bound and gagged, 
but he immediately stabs her, revealing himself as Ghostface, before leaving her to bleed out. Sydney is confronted by Charlie and a second Ghostface, who reveals herself as Jill. She admits to masterminding the murders out of jealousy from the fame that Sydney received for surviving the previous killing sprees and desires to achieve fame as a pseudo-victim of the murders, intending to frame Trevor as Ghostface. Jill kills Trevor and betrays Charlie, stabbing him to death to pin him as Trevor's accomplice so she can be the sole survivor. She stabs Sydney and then stabs herself to frame Trevor further. Dewey and the police arrive as Sydney and Jill are taken to the hospital. After discovering that Sydney has survived, an enraged Jill goes to her hospital room and makes a final attempt to kill her. Dewey, Gail, and Judy intervene, having been clued in by the fact that Jill somehow knew exactly where Gail was stabbed. Jill subdues Dewey and Hicks and holds Gail at gunpoint, but Sydney incapacitates her with a defibrillator and ultimately kills Jill by shooting her in the heart. Dewey calls in all police units, as reporters outside erroneously name Jill as the sole surviving hero. 25 years after Billy Loomis and Stu Mache's killing spree in Woodsboro, high school student Tara Carpenter is home alone when she is attacked by Ghostface and left hospitalized. Tara's estranged older sister Sam Carpenter is informed by Wes Hicks, one of Tara's friends, about the attack. Sam returns to Woodsboro with her boyfriend Richie to visit Tara at the hospital, where Sam is reunited with Tara's friend group, Wes, Amber Freeman, twins Chad and Mindy Meeks Martin, and Liv McKenzie. That night, Liv's ex-boyfriend Vince, who is Stu's nephew, is killed by Ghostface. After an encounter with Ghostface at the hospital, Sam tells Tara that she has been dealing with hallucinations of Billy, who Sam learned as a teenager was her biological father. Sam's true parentage resulted in their parents' separation and this is why Sam became estranged from Tara. Sam and Richie visit Dewey Riley, who is divorced from Gail Weathers. They ask for his help in stopping the killer, and he contacts Gail and Sidney Prescott, warning them about the return of Ghostface. Dewey joins them at Mindy and Chad's home and is reunited with the twins' mother Martha, Randy Meek's sister. With the three attacks being on people related in some capacity to the original killers, Mindy deduces that the killer is following the rules of a requel, a continuation of a narrative that derives heavily from the plot of the original, while using Tara and her friends as the new generation and using Sam's connection to Billy as a way to weave the legacy characters. Ghostface then murders Wes and his mother, Sheriff Judy Hicks, at their home. Dewey reunites with Gail, who has arrived in town to cover the story. At the hospital, Tara and Richie are attacked by Ghostface, but are saved by an arriving Dewey and Sam. Sam, Tara and Richie escape, but Dewey is killed when he attempts to finish off Ghostface. Sydney arrives in town after learning of Dewey's death and meets both Gail and Sam at the hospital. Sydney asks Sam to help stop the killer, but Sam declines, choosing to leave town with Richie and Tara. Sydney and Gail follow the trio to Amber's, which is revealed to be Stu's former home where the original Woodsboro massacre took place. While a party is in progress to honor Wes' memory, Chad and Mindy are both attacked by Ghostface. As the friend group convenes, Amber pulls out a gun and shoots Liv in the head, revealing herself as the killer. Sydney and Gail arrive, and Richie is revealed as Tara's attacker and Amber's accomplice. He stabs Sam, and he and Amber take Sam. Sydney, and Gail into the kitchen where Sydney had first faced off against Billy and Stu. Richie and Amber reveal they are fans of the Stab film series who met online. Disappointed in the trajectory taken with the most recent Stab 8, they decided to embark on a new killing spree, bringing back the original cast to provide new and improved source material for a future requel Stab film and intend to frame Sam as the killer. Sam attacks Richie and Tara attacks Amber but is incapacitated, Richie goes after Sam while Sydney and Gail fight Amber together, ending with Gail breaking free and shooting Amber, who lands on a turned-on stove and is set on fire. Richie pursues Sam, who sees another hallucination of Billy, which brings her attention to Amber's abandoned knife. Embracing her paternal heritage, she uses the knife to stab Richie repeatedly before shooting and killing him. A horribly burnt Amber attempts to attack the group again but is shot to death by Tara. Tara and the Meeks twins are loaded into ambulances to be taken to the hospital, 
and Sam thanks Sydney and Gail for their help. Gail refuses to write about the new murders and give the killers notoriety, opting to write a tribute to Dewey instead. Sam joins Terry in the ambulance and the night's events are covered in a news report, 